Daughter Phil, a daughter's suicide. You believe her boyfriend knew she was going to kill herself. And two parents. I love Samantha more than anyone I have ever met. You didn't go to the funeral? No, I had a licensure exam that day. Struggling with grief. Why can we not have our daughter's clothes? I told you that they were outside. You could come get them. What did her boyfriend know? You were with a woman tonight. Samantha died. Did you go home with that girl? Uh, I did. Did you wake up and make out with that girl? I, I don't think it's necessary for me to get into the intimate details. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five. Not giving up on you. Jonathan were college sweethearts, and Samantha majored in business, and Jonathan had just entered his second year at a prestigious law school. But according to Samantha's father, Dan, and her stepmother, Katie, life on campus for these co-ed lovers was far from perfect. They say they began to notice major red flags with Jonathan. They claim just weeks into the relationship, he began isolating Samantha from her family and friends, installing GPS on her phone and monitoring her every conversation. But they say before they could convince their daughter to leave Jonathan, the unthinkable happened. Two days before Halloween, a police officer and a priest knocked on their door, delivering the most horrifying news. Daughter Samantha was dead. She had been found hanging lifeless from inside her carport at the house she shared with her boyfriend Jonathan. Police say her cold and lifeless body had hung for hours, shockingly mistaken as a lifelike Halloween decoration. Now the police have ruled Samantha's death a suicide, but Katie and Dan insist that Jonathan is responsible for her death. Take a look. Without a doubt, Jonathan is responsible for Samantha's death. Jonathan is a narcissist and a sociopath. My daughter would still be alive if she had never met him. Before Jonathan, Samantha knew who she was and what she wanted. When Jonathan showed up, she became subservient and quiet. She started becoming more and more isolated. If I was having a conversation with Samantha, Jonathan literally took over. One time I stopped by the house when Jonathan came home, she completely shut down. She became a mannequin. She was crying out for help. She was in pain. My little girl. Whew. After Samantha died, uh, we were able to get into her Facebook. Why aren't you answering? You better answer your phone right now. Absolutely horrified us. You're going to be in so much trouble. You better be prepared to get the out. He was trying to control her. Jonathan had all these rules. If she broke them, she paid some sort of penalty. She was supposed to have her GPS on at all times. Every 15 to 20 seconds, he would be messaging her, where are you? As a father, it made me extremely angry that somebody would treat my daughter like that. <sighs> On this particular one that we read ended with Jonathan saying, I'm going to kill you. It was seven days before she died. Now these parents are so upset because Katie actually believes that Jonathan knew that Samantha was going to take her life that night. She believes he knew and has gone out of his way to cover up his behavior that led up to her death. There are a lot of things that don't add up when it comes to what happened with Samantha that night. Jonathan knew that Samantha had been threatening suicide. He never mentioned one single problem with Samantha whatsoever. Jonathan